Imagine a prairie rich in American heritage, a vast and magnificent landscape that inspires the mind and soothes the spirit. Imagine a place where plants and animals thrive in their native habitat. Imagine an area that is a vital economic resource for the people who live here. Yeah, yeah that's the future. And a valued natural resource for the people who visit here. Imagine the American Prairie Reserve. From the last ice age 10,000 years ago to the 20th century, a truly wild west existed in Montana, a vast open space where thundering herds of bison drove the economies of nations of Plains Indians, a place rich in the diversity of nature, an enormous ecosystem with nature in balance. The American Prairie Foundation wants to restore that balance. The American Prairie Reserve is emerging as an extraordinary wildlife reserve in a unique area of the plains, where, as a result of good stewardship by local landowners, millions of acres of prairie were never plowed. Here, the land remains largely intact. APF is acquiring tens of thousands of acres of this land to reestablish depleted wildlife populations, preserve the native prairie, provide lasting economic benefits to the people who live here and create an exciting destination for those who visit here. What we dream about is having something that's so large that you know you can see 40 or 50 miles and even beyond the horizon there's another 30 or 40 miles of almost nothing except the natural world operating the way it does. The American Prairie Foundation is working with the World Wildlife Fund WWF is heading up the science for restoring and conserving the native prairie and its wildlife. If we really want to restore ecosystems that have something like the functional properties that were originally there, we need large scale thinking and planning. And I think that's what attracts people is the scale and the vision about what this can look like. 30, 40, 50, 100 years down the road when our grandchildren are wanting to see what the plains once looked like and the wildlife that inhabits it. We have a grand vision. There's nothing else being done like this at this sort of scale and in the United States. Uh, that's very important. The United States uh, has not been a leader in the environmental area. So to have something of this scale that will be here for centuries and that sets a model for the rest of the world I think is a really important concept. George Horse Capture is a member of the Grovan tribe, also called the White Clay people. It's never going to be like the old days. Can't do that. But if we have enough of these little oases around where people can glimpse what should be, what could be, maybe it'll spread. It makes me smile when I think about it. Mountains, rocks, and ice are wonderful. They're beautiful. But when you spend time on the prairie, it has a different kind of spirituality. It's more subtle. Uh, the colors are more subtle. The animals are a little harder to see than the birds, but there's just as much here. It just takes a little more sort of being quiet with yourself and sort of being here to realize how special it is. Look at the blue right up above. Few artists capture the subtlety and the colors of the prairie landscape as well as Clyde Aspovic, who grew up on a farm in Montana near the Canadian border. His paintings capture places he fears could disappear in his lifetime. I travel a great deal, and every time I come back here, you realize how quickly um, areas like this can change. I hope that what I'm doing uh, through my paintings Will, will help people understand uh, 
not only the beauty of this land, but the reason why, why it needs to be preserved. This is an inspirational place where you can come and be alone and really search deeply within yourself. We see the inspiration in the work of the professional photographer Diane Hargreaves, who focuses on the endangered and threatened species of the northern Great Plains. The animals have given me a great gift in my life of sharing their time and their space with me. And if my photography can help other people become enthused about saving the animals and the wildlife, as well as the habitat the wildlife lives in, then I can't ask for any more. Perhaps no species is as emblematic of the northern American grasslands as the plains bison. Due to crossbreeding with livestock, most of the 500,000 bison alive today contain some cattle genes. We looked all around North America for a source for genetically pure bison. What we found is there's precious few. In 2005, the American Prairie Foundation and the World Wildlife Fund acquired a small herd of genetically pure American bison from Wind Cave National Park. Coming down. The bison were loaded in trucks and shipped 800 miles from South Dakota to the American Prairie Reserve in Montana, their native home. In 2006, the first offspring were born. They're home. This was home to them about 100 years ago, and this is where they come from. So uh, it's kind of special to see those little guys walking around down there. What I like to see is a herd of thousands of bison across the horizon. A diversity of bird life, more bird life than we've ever seen out here before. Golden eagles soaring, all the grassland birds here. I'd like to see a, a town of prairie dogs that stretches over the horizon again, like they used to. And a lot of black-footed ferrets, you go out and spot at night, the green eye shine. And a lot of people enjoying it, enjoying what was once here and saying, wow, we're really happy this was all brought back. Lewis and Clark first came up the Missouri River and stopped in this area. On every single point of the compass, they reported that they would see wildlife in vast, vast numbers. There would be elk in this direction or bighorn sheep in this direction. Over here would be some pronghorn mixed with, with uh, mule deer or white-tailed deer. And over to the left would be buffalo. But, and then the skies, you know, filled with all kinds of waterfowl, raptors, and different kinds of uh, grassland birds. APF believes that local people can be and should be the primary beneficiaries of economic opportunities that arise from the success of this effort. This big wildlife amenity and agriculture can coexist very well here and create a much more diversified economy. We're hiring locally, buying locally, more people are beginning to visit the area to see the birds, the bison, things like that, bringing economic activity. So we think the net positive effect is really beginning to show. And I feel really good about you know, some of the folks that are getting together in the American Prairie Foundation and what they're trying to do. I can kind of see the mole fences coming up and maybe places for the antelope to cross freely. A place where not just our Indian kids from the reservation where there's very few opportunities to expand their mind and new experiences. Not just our Indian kids, but different nationalities. Down. A place Down where here. we can go, it's learn Telegraph together. So this is one of the major tributaries to Telegraph Creek. I'm third generation in the ranching business. In my father's time, we were running somewhere around four or 5,000 head of cows. And the reason that uh, I joined APF is uh, their philosophy and the philosophy that my family's had for probably 75 years is pretty close to the same. You might find that kind of amazing, but um, uh, we've always uh, loved the prairie. We made our living off of it. And we always uh, felt that uh, if you took care of the grasslands and the prairie lands that uh, it took care of you. 
The American Prairie Reserve is now a reality, and visitors are welcome, individuals, families, and groups. Several times a year, APF hosts safaris. Attention and your enthusiasm, we just very much appreciate it. Everybody that comes to Safari walks away saying, wow, this is incredible. This is, I had no idea what this is all about. Thanks very much for allowing us to be a part of it. Come experience firsthand the exhilaration of the dawn on this vast, beautiful, and uniquely American landscape. Learn about efforts to reassemble it. Visit the bison herd. Imagine what your grandchildren will see when they come here with their children. I hope in a, in a bigger, more symbolic way, it gives people inspiration that really big things can still be done in this day and age. You just have to dream big. The American Prairie Foundation invites you to visit this growing reserve, invites you to be inspired, and invites you to join them in creating this treasure. You go to Yellowstone Park and you see animals, you're going to come here and you're going to see twice as many animals you ever saw in Yellowstone. It would be wonderful to have artists, musicians, uh, writers spend more time out here. One of our main goals is to bring back the wildlife and maintain the access for the public. This isn't just saving a bit of nature. It shows that nature can be resilient if we give it a chance and are willing to do something, we can bring back something we've lost. And that's the really exciting thing about this visit here and realize everything you're seeing here is happening just the way it ought to. And I expect to see people coming from long distances um, in order to visualize and, and take in this landscape. And so what's always been exciting about this is not only a grand vision and doing something that's marvelous, but to have something that really will exist forever and forever and for our children. <laughs>